reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of God most high, met Abraham as he returned from his defeat of the kings and blessed him. And Abraham apportioned to him a tenth of everything. His name first means righteous king. And he was also king of Salem, that is, king of peace. Without father, mother, or ancestry, without beginning of days or end of life, thus made to resemble the Son of God, he remains a priest forever. It is even more obvious if another priest is raised up after the likeness of Melchizedek, who has become so not by a law expressed in a commandment concerning physical descent, but by the power of a life that cannot be destroyed, for it is testified. You are priests forever according to the order of Melchizedek. Verbum Domini. You are priests forever in the line of Melchizedek. The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. The scepter of your power, the Lord, will stretch forth from Zion, rule in the midst of your enemies. Yours is princely power in the day of your birth and holy splendor before the day star like the dew I have begotten you. You have sworn and he will not repent. The Lord has sworn and he will not repent. You are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Jesus preached the gospel of the kingdom and cured every disease among the people. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia. Dominus Rabiscum, Lexio Sancte Evangelii Segundum Markum. Jesus entered the synagogue. There was a man there who had a withered hand. They watched Jesus closely to see if he would cure him on the Sabbath, so they might accuse him. He said to the man with the withered hand, Come up here before us. Then he said to the Pharisees, Is it lawful to do good on the Sabbath rather than to do evil, to save life rather than to destroy it? But they remained silent, looking around at them with anger and grieved at the hardness of their heart. Jesus said to the man, Stretch out your hand. He stretched it out, and the hand was restored. The Pharisees went out and immediately took counsel with the Herodians against him to put him to death. Verbum Domini. Well, my brothers and sisters of Christ, how apropos with today's first reading. It's like I have no choice but to celebrate a Mass for priests, and that's what we're doing, we're celebrating a Mass for priests, of course, because of the first reading. You're a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek in the line of Melchizedek. And so, of course, Melchizedek is... Uh, 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 foretelling, <coughs> a foretelling of Christ, the high priest, and the, the priestly line of which Jesus is a high priest was instituted at the same time at the Last Supper that Jesus instituted the Eucharist. That's why when I do the Luminous Mysteries of the Rosary, if you ever hear me, live streaming, excuse me, live streaming the luminous mysteries of the rosary, when we get to the last mystery, I will always say Christ institutes the Eucharist, and in the Eucharist institutes his priesthood, because you cannot separate the priesthood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ from the Eucharist, all right? There, and, and again, no priest, no Eucharist, right? But where does this faculty, this power, come from for uh, a priest to change the body and blood into, I'm sorry, the, the bread and wine into the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Well, from the bishops, from the bishops in the Great Commission, 
Jesus says, All authority on heaven and earth has been given to me. Go, therefore. The implication is, again, I gave it to you. So this whole idea of the power to change the bread and wine into the body and blood of Christ, Jesus gave to his bishops the power to uh, forgive and retain sin. Jesus gave to his bishops. And then, of course, all power on heaven and earth has been given to Jesus, and then he gave it to his bishops. Surely they can pass it on. The primacy of Peter could be passed on. It's ludicrous, it's ridiculous to think that these powers, this authority that Jesus gave his bishops could not be passed on. If Jesus had the power to pass on this authority, he could give that power to pass on that authority to the bishops. The bishops could pass it on from bishop to bishop, bishop to bishop. And that the bishops could decide, in union with the priest, right, how far that power went. And we see in the New Testament that the bishops gave priests, uh, ordained priests, and gave priests the power to celebrate Mass, to consecrate the body and blood, the, the bread and wine into the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. But everything comes from Jesus through the bishops, through the bishops. And that is for priests what's called faculties, their faculties, their powers. Their powers come from the bishops, from Jesus through the bishops. And indeed, uh, once a priest is ordained, once a priest is ordained, he uh, submits in obedience to his bishop. That is one of the promises he makes, and it's a primary promise that he makes, that I pledge my obedience to you and your successors. And so the power of a priest to forgive or retain sins to minister the sacraments, especially turning the body, the, the bread and wine into the body and blood of Christ, comes from the bishop and is predicated on his willingness to obey the bishop. To obey the bishop. These are privileges that come. But they're privileges that we as priests receive in return for our pledging obedience to the bishop. And in and, and pledging obedience to the bishop, we're pledging obedience to Jesus Christ. And so, my brothers and sisters in Christ, this whole idea that we're hearing now, because of the situation that exists, oh, you know, Father, you're a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek, you're a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. Well, the indelible mark exists, there's no doubt about it. But, he, in essence, gave up the privileges, or any priest gives up the privileges of his priesthood when he decides that he's going to not obey the bishop. So you lay people, you lay people to throw this stuff out there, and I will tell you, it's all the laity throwing this stuff out there. You don't see uh, 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 priests throwing this stuff out there, that, oh, well, Father, you're a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. No, because they understand, all right, they understand that their priestly privileges is derived from, predicated on, their submission of obedience to the bishop, to the bishop, to their bishop. Um, you know, for... for, for a, a, a priest to stand up and tell a bishop, non serviam, I, I will not serve, I'm not going to serve, is, is not as evil, not as evil as uh, when, when Satan said to God, I will not serve, because when Satan said to God, I will not serve, he says, I will serve in no way, shape, or form. He's rejecting God, denying God. So the non-servium of a priest towards his bishop isn't that bad. But still, it's enough to reject his priesthood, at least the privileges of his priesthood. And so, my brothers and sisters of Christ, we need to understand this. We need to understand this. This whole idea of you're a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek, that comes with responsibilities 
priestly responsibilities. It comes with priestly privileges. But if you reject your responsibilities as a priest, that is, all right, that you, uh, for instance, don't want to uh, remain celibate. You don't want to uh, remain obedient. You lose those privileges. And so I implore my brothers and sisters in Christ, laity, please do not throw this out there. You're a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. Uh, as if some way you're beating a bishop over the head saying, uh, or the pope over the head saying, oh, you can't lay a size of priest because he's a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. No, absolutely, a uh, priest can be laicized if indeed the priest rejects his priestly responsibilities. First and foremost, his responsibility to be obedient to the bishop because in that obedience, so the other responsibilities fall under. So, uh, please, my brothers and sisters in Christ, today during this Mass, let us, uh, let us uh, pray for priests. Let us pray about priestly obedience. Let us pray for the church, the hierarchy of the church, because it is predicated on obedience. The, the Pope is charged with being obedient to all that Jesus commanded, all that Jesus taught. And so are the bishops. And we see that that's a problem now here, too, coming to the fore, right? That this is a problem where we have uh, bishops and, and, and uh, uh, the Pope playing fast and loose with this whole idea of obedience. But the fact of the matter is that they still don't lose the power of their... Uh, uh, they are giving faculties, their ability to give faculties to a priest by their disobedience. By their disobedience. This is a hard pill to swallow. We must accept it. All right. If they indeed are laicized by some rightful authority, and a bishop can only be laicized by the Pope, uh, then, of course, they lose all their priestly privileges, too. Just finally, one thing, all right, in the gospel, uh, this whole idea that Jesus looked upon the uh, scribes, the Pharisees, right, who he challenged with a question, and they, they were silent, and he looked around at them in anger, with anger, righteous anger, righteous anger, because they, they were hypocrites. They were hypocrites. They were duplicitous. And he grieved, though, at the hardness of their heart. His anger stemmed from his grief because he desired their souls. He desired their salvation, and they were rejecting their salvation. They were rejecting him. And so, my brothers and sisters in Christ, when we see people being obstinate in rejecting their salvation, there can be a righteous anger there, but it should flow from our grief uh, because of their rejection of their salvation. And there's nothing else we can do in these circumstances. The circumstance I was speaking about before and the circumstance that uh, I am now talking about, get down on our knees and pray and fast because only by an act of God, a divine, act, uh, divine intervention, can the grace come for their conversion just as uh, we cooperate the grace of daily conversion uh, so the grace of conversion must be uh, grasped, must be embraced, and that's what we're asking. We're asking for a softening of hearts for all those who obstinately persist uh, in rejecting the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ through the hardness of their heart, because Jesus does desire that all be saved and none be lost, and so should we.